Hi, I'm Sean Reardon, Mayor of Newburyport, and welcome to another special edition of the Mayor's Corner. We are coming to you live from the gates of hell today. <laughs> because it's a special Halloween edition of the Mayor's Corner. Now, I actually don't know what these gates are really called, but when I was a kid, we always called these the gates of hell. And this was a place that once you got a little older, you could probably get into a little trouble down here, but they were always very spooky uh, as a kid. So we thought this would be a perfect place to come, uh, come to you live today and talk about uh, all the great things that are going on uh, this month around Halloween, okay? But first I wanted to uh, just talk a little bit about some things that are going on in the city. And then I'm gonna bring in Teddy Speck from Theater in the Open. And we're gonna talk about uh, all the great things going on for Halloween this month. Uh, first, just a couple quick updates. Uh, so there is some fall hydrant flushing going on throughout the city right now. Uh, I think we're doing a really great job updating the website and uh, social media every day about where that's taking place. So remember, we do this twice a year, right? So we, we flush the hydrants and then you might see some brown water uh, for uh, a little bit, uh, either in your toilet or when you run the faucet. So just make sure those are flushed out before you do anything. Uh, you def definitely don't want to do like a load of laundry before that's all flushed out. Uh, my neighborhood got the brown water last week and you know we were patient, we waited, and then it flushed out. So some I'm noticing some neighborhoods is taking a little bit longer. So just, just, just be patient and make sure you've got some clear water before you start, uh, start, before you start using it. The water restrictions are still in place. Uh, we haven't got any updates from the state yet. So remember you can water uh, in the morning and at night right now. So that's, I've, I've spoken enough about that, but the restrictions are still in place because we're still, still in drought conditions. Uh, a cool thing that's happening this week at the water treatment plant, we are piloting a system that removes the PFAS from, from our drinking water. Now we test our water all the time here, right? And we don't typically test high for PFAS, but uh, other parts of the area do. But we're piloting this technology just to see uh, just to see how it works and see how effective it is. But this technology is uh, from a company called Cycloplur. And it just re and it's it's pretty cool. It's a cool technology. So we're we're ch testing that out. You'll probably see an article in the paper about it. But that's happening later this week. Uh, so uh, keep an eye out for that. But we're pretty excited to be uh, partnering with that company. The Plum Island dredge is starting today. Absolutely today. This afternoon they're going to start. As you know, this is the uh, res reservation terrace area out on Plum Island. We're putting about 230,000 cubic yards of sand back on the beach there. Uh, I, as I've been telling everybody, go to our website. We have a complete page set up for this. So the beach, essentially the Newburyport side of the beach is going to be closed down from now until we can get the dredge complete. Uh, just That just is gonna keep it safe for everybody out there. We're not disturbing the neighborhoods out there. We're going around, so we're, we're stationed at the point parking lot, and then we've got the piping and, and all the equipment going around the beach uh, to the reservation terrace area, and that's gonna be putting the beach. So the Army Corps of Engineers is on site, and uh, they're giving us updates every day about the progress. Uh, so we're just, so we're so excited that this, this um, is finally taking place right after a year of waiting for this this dredge to happen. Uh, we've got H&L contracting, they're up from Long Island. Uh, we've had great uh, meetings with them so far, so they're excited to get started too. So again, I will continue to update you on the progress of the dredge, but uh, you can also go on our website, cityofnewreport.com, go to the planning page, and then you'll see we have a, a separate tab for the Plum Island dredge. And we're also gonna try to keep residents up to date as much as possible with any kind of changes. Uh, Cutter Fire Station is uh, moving right along. Uh, the, if, you, if you're on that page on the website, you can actually click on the, the Cutter Fire Station too. That's our station two, out by Lieutenant Larry Drive and Longfellow and Virginia Lane out on the west end. Uh, but we made it through the planning board with not a ton of comments from them. That's great. So kudos to the design team, Jordy Vining's heading up this project. But if you want some more information on that, we're hoping to break ground in the spring. Uh, quick, quick update on Parks Reorg. So again, we're still going to take the rest of this month and work with some of the different stakeholders uh, to get a little bit more consensus around the plan. And then when, once we have that consensus and have the buy-in from, from these different uh, entities, we'll bring it back to City Council. And once we get it back to City Council and can move forward, then we're going to uh, move forward with the NYS at 59 Low Street plans. Uh, we're going to bring that to council for a presentation, but again, we're going to try to finish the parks reorg first before we bring in another initiative to city council. Again, just trying to build that consensus before uh, you know going to the full council. So we're excited about that plan as well. Um, and then finally, I just want to give you an, uh, a quick update. Uh, the electricity rates are going up in the city. I know this has been talked about a little bit uh, in the paper. They're going up by 64% starting November 1st. Uh, so uh, National Grid is coming and they're going to host a public meeting at the Senior Center next week, October 19th at 1 p.m. 
at the Senior Center. I'm actually going to talk to my good friends at NCM Hub and see if they're going to tape it for us so we can have that available for people who can't make it live. Uh, but they're coming in and National Grid's just going to explain uh, where they are with that. And we're also having conversations right now internally about how we can help residents because this is a pretty massive jump uh, in electricity costs. So we're going to try to do what we can uh, to help everybody. But um, but yeah, so if you can't make that, NCM Hub's going to tape it for us and we're going to get that out there for you. So I think that's that's all I have for updates about the city, but let's get to the fun part of the show, right? We want to talk about all the great events that are going on uh, throughout October uh, for Halloween here in the city. So th again, there's lots of things even starting this weekend that are going on and... Uh, ah! <laughs> you know what? People say that this job would be the death of me and sure enough, I've got death hanging out beside me here. Oh, oh hey! <laughs> So I have Teddy Speck with me, and he's going to talk a little bit. So Teddy Speck does a wonderful job with Theater of the Open. They do things all year round, but they do a lot of cool things right around Halloween, too. So Teddy, why don't you tell us a little bit about, and Def, tell us a little bit about what's going on this month with you and your group. Sure. Can I get out of Death first? You can get out of Death. <laughs> Good to see you. Good hey, thanks seen. for coming out today. Thank you. So not only is Teddy with Theater in the Open, but he's also part of the Newburyport Arts Collective, and they have a lot of different events going on throughout the month. So Teddy, why don't you just tell a little, little, little bit about what you guys are doing and some of the other events going on this month. <sighs> Absolutely. I feel like uh, we really own October oh, around yeah. here. You know, <laughs> the, the beauty of Maudsley and uh, all the exciting things that are happening in our cultural sector here. Um, so Theater in the Open is always very busy in October because we have Maudsley is Haunted uh, on the 22nd and 23rd, which we've been doing ever since 1989 yep. now. It was the first thing that I did with Theater in the Open as okay. a kid, so it's a big joy for me to get to come back every year, put on the death suit, and uh, welcome 2,000 people to Maudsley State Park every year. Um, we're bringing that down to uh, Appleton Farm, and we're, doing, we're also doing Poe, which is a play that Theater in the Open created. Okay. We're, we're going to be doing that at Oak Hill Cemetery um, at the l and Chapel, uh, L&T Brown Memorial Chapel, and um, we're also bringing it down to Salem. So Theater in the Open is just too busy. Right, and all the, over the place the this month. The problem with being so busy is that you don't get to see all the awesome shows that the rest of the cultural sector is putting on. Our friends at the Actor Studio have three shows coming up. They have a, um, a reading by a Boston uh, playwright. Um, it's going to be super spooky. That's coming right up. They are partnering with Anna Smolowitz um, to do a witch play, is it? Oh, um, that's with cool. some, some students making monologues for... Um, for Halloween, and they're also working with Fontaine Debuse and the Dance Place and the Joppa Dancers on uh, a show that they are making themselves and putting on behind the Custom House Maritime Museum. That's coming up. Then the Firehouse has Carrie the Musical, Evil Dead the Musical. Rocky for Horror. People like me who are a little bit scared <laughs> to go to the Family Fair, do the Goosebumps Musical, and of course, Halloween's not complete without no. the Firehouse uh, sing-along to Rocky Horror. Absolutely. Um, and, and then the library, the library has a, a history program on the, the history of Halloween. It has, um, a, we just finished doing the Crucible Theater in the Open at Rocky Hill uh, Meeting House. And in preparation for that, I read this fantastic book called A Storm of Witchcraft by local historian Emerson Baker. Oh, wow. And he is going to be giving a talk about that book at the library on the 24th. Can't wait to see that. Um, and they're also screening The Shining at the public library. Oh my goodness. It's terrifying. <laughs> yeah. My kids just got introduced to The Shining, so uh, I've already gone through it with my kids. Right, but uh, <laughs> um, hmm. Maybe the library will make it so that I can consume that. You know? <laughs> it's too scary. So, it's, so we have a lot going on, right? So that's just the New Report Arts Collective. And I just wanted to point out, you can go to the newreportartscollective.org to check out all those things that, that was mentioned too. But there's a couple other things happening this weekend too that I just wanted to make sure that we got to. Uh, <clears throat> this is an incredibly Halloween-y, but there's a Pause for the Cause fundraiser going on at the Rail Trail on Saturday. Uh, that is part of the Karen Wellington Foundation for, <clears throat> for Breast Cancer. Uh, it helps women in their families who are going through breast cancer. That's from 10 to 12. And that's at the rail trail starting on Washington Street. Uh, back to more of the Octoberish things is uh, Friday. It's Witches Night Out downtown. That's put on by the Chamber of Commerce. So the stores open a little later, six to nine. Come on down. It's one of the funnest nights downtown. You see uh, everyone around dressed up as witches. And there's usually a lot of fun things going on at each of the businesses as well. A lot of adult uh, beverages too, which is a lot of fun. Uh, but again, it's always a really fun night. Oktoberfest is happening on Saturday down at the waterfront. Uh, that's from 12 to 5, Saturday and Sunday, Waterfront Park, 
family-friendly programs, live music. There's going to be a beer garden that's put on by the Chamber of Commerce as well. Uh, we heard about a lot of the great things <clears throat> going on. And I just wanted to point out that uh, we have three different trick-or-treat opportunities here in Newburyport, right? So City Hall, I'm bringing back City Hall trick-or-treat. I heard this was a thing of the past. Uh, I wanted to bring it back. So on Thursday, October 27th from 5 to 6, you can come the first floor of City Hall. We're going to do some trick-or-treating. Uh, so you can come and do that. Uh, we're going to hopefully have some people in costume. We'll decorate a little bit, but that should be fun. It's a nice way to check out City Hall, but also uh, be part of trick-or-treat. There's downtown trick-or-treat that all the businesses take part in. That's going to be Friday, uh, October 28th from 4 to 5. And then we have the regular city uh, trick-or-treat on Monday, October 31st from 5.30 to 7.30. So, like you said, October, October is a big month, you know, particularly for you guys uh, in the arts uh, world. We have so many great things going on. Uh, so I, I encourage everyone to check out the schedules, check out the websites, plan ahead. Make sure you get down here for uh, Haunted Mosley. It is literally uh, always fun. Uh, it's all, they always mix it up. It's, it's a great way to see our beautiful state park as well. And happy Halloween. Remember, Witches Night Out. Salem's not the only one that have witches. New Report has a very rich witch history too. So get out there on Friday night, enjoy Witches Night Out, get out to Oktoberfest, get out to theater at the open, and we'll see you on Trick or Treat at City Hall on Thursday, October 27th. Boom. <laughs>